All right, I'd like to suggest. In today's video, we have a benchmarking video for you. We're going to be testing the new Ryzen 5 5600G and see how good the APU or the integrated graphics inside this processor does for gaming here in 2021. If you haven't seen the build video, I'll put a link to it up here if you'd like to go watch the build video on this. We're going to run down through the components and tell you what, what kind of components we're dealing with in this system. All right, guys, to start out the build with, the main component, we have the AMD Ryzen 5 5600G. For the motherboard, we have the Gigabyte B550MDS3H motherboard. And the RAM that we have in the system is G-Skills Rip Draws 5, Series 16 gigs, 2 8x2, 8, 8 gig sticks. For the storage in this, we do have Silicon Power 512 gigabyte NVMe SSD. For the case, we have the Fractor Design Focus G. And to power everything, we have the Corsair CX series cx 550 watt power supply for today's numbers you're going to see these benchmarks today i ran everything in stock the only thing i did do was i went into the bios of the motherboard and i did overclock the rim i did enable xmp profile these apus they do not have dedicated memory they do use your system memory for their memory and they like a little bit faster memory so the better the better speed i get on my memory the better performance you're going to get out of this. But rather than that, the CPU is running at stock speeds, the IGP is running out of stock speeds, and the dedicated VRAM is dedicated by the motherboard. I did not go in and dedicate a certain amount of VRAM to the, to the IGP in the system for today's numbers. And here is a, here's a picture of Task Manager of the system. It is the 5600G running at stock, which is base 3.9. And you can see right here, even out on the desktop, it was hitting 4.10 gigahertz. All right, and here's a, here's a picture of the RAM and the task manager. Like I said, I did enable the XMP profile. I was able to get up to 3600 megahertz stably. But we are running 16 gigs of memory. And you see this hardware reserve down here, 623 megabytes. That's because some of this is being reserved for the iGPU. And here's a picture of the GPU within the task manager. And as you can tell on the dedicated GPU memory, it's only allocating 512 megabytes or just a little over a half of a gigabyte of memory for the integrated graphics. So that just kind of shows you in the task manager what kind of what kind of settings I was using for the system. And all the games I tested today, I was trying to get at least that 60 frames per second, see what kind of settings you had, you'd have to play at to get that 60 fraps that most PC gamers are wanting. Like I mentioned, this is not a AAA title playing system. It does play AAA titles. As you can see, I did use Borderlands 3 as a benchmark for the AAA title. You can get it up close to 60 frames per second, but you have to use 720p at low settings. Now, I believe these APUs are more set for, you know, your less demanding titles like your Fortnite, your AP Apex Legends, and so on and so forth. But just keep in mind when you're looking at the benchmark numbers, to look a little bit above them. And I'll tell you what kind of settings I was actually running. Some of them's at 1080p, some of them's at 720p. Just depends on what I had to put, what I had to set at to be able to get close to that 60 frames per second that most people was wanting. So let me roll the clips here and the diagrams of uh, how good it played in each game here and I'll be back with my conclusion to the video.
right all and that's the numbers I got in my testing today as I said at the beginning of this you know I don't believe this is made for AAA titles you can play AAA titles like I showed you in Borderlands 3 you can do about 60 frames per second if you if you'll settle with 720p low settings Apex Legends it didn't do quite as well as what I thought it was going to do it was a 720p get get about that 60 frames per second you know but i think this thing's more aimed at like your cs goes i think it's better for, for fortnite uh even your rainbow six siege is pretty easy game to run if you're into playing rainbow six siege i think you'd be all right with stuff like that of course your dota 2 um you know some of your more east esport titles i think you're going to be uh, i think you'd be pretty happy with the purchase of this I think this would be a pretty good, I think this would be a pretty good gap filler uh, if you're waiting to get a, to get a dedicated GPU for your gaming system. It'll still get you up and going. And you can still play your games and have a pretty good time. If you go back and watch the footage, the frame times on all of the games that was tested here today was pretty stable. There was a couple in Apex Legends and in Fortnite, which Fortnite's known with this for AMD graphics for some reason. There's some pretty big spikes within the frame timings, which that is a stutter. I didn't even notice it while I was playing the game. So I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal. I was thinking maybe the temperature was holding this back, but if you go back and watch the footage, the temperature was never, you know, they ranged from 40 to 60 degrees. I was on the CPU and the IGPU both, and that's using a stock heat sink. So I don't think you really need to worry about your temperatures too much unless you get into overclocking. And then when you, if you can get into overclocking the IGPU or the CPU on this thing, then you may need to update, upgrade that heat sink. But as far as just running out of the box settings, I think you'd be fine with the included heat sink with it. And yes, my RAM kit was a 3200 megahertz RAM kit. I was able to get mine up to overclocked up to 3600 megahertz, which is pretty good for a Ryzen 5000 series. This being an APU, if you go with a little bit faster RAM, you could possibly get a little bit better performance out of this. But I think your main performance lift in this, with this APU, is going to be by overclocking the iGPU. Which we will be covering here on the channel. We will be doing a video on overclocking, how to do, how to overclock the iGPU. And also, what kind of performance gains you can get by overclocking your iGPU. So make sure you hit that subscribe button if you want to see them videos when they come live. But I think that's going to pretty well wrap it up this video, guys. Make sure you go down and give me a like if you like this kind of content. Hit me, hit that dislike button if you didn't. I also have a comment section below. I go through them every weekend here on my live stream, 11 o'clock Eastern Standard Time in the U.S. on a Saturday morning. And make sure you hit that little lonely red subscribe button, turn that notification bell on if you want to see them next videos coming up about this APU. And also there's links in the description for Instagram and Twitter. I don't care your inbox, but I do put up photos of new stuff I have coming in, give you an idea of what's coming up on the channel and whatnot. If there's any information about my live stream, if I got cancer or change the time, it's where you also get informed of that information. With all that being said, you all have a good day, and I'll see you in the next video or live stream.